Good morning. Thank you all for attending today's workshop. My name's Jeff Holmes. I am the FAE for the UK and Ireland, and we're here today to go through the STM32 L4 workshop. The objectives of today's workshop is to present to you the new STM32 L4 family, which is a Cortex M4 based device. We're going to show you all the new features and new capabilities of this STM32 L4 device. We're then going to have a look using hands-on examples, the performance, doing both simple tasks and complex tasks. We're then going to cover all the new peripherals in a lot more detail, so you can see all the new features that we've added to the STM32 L4. And then finally, we're going to practice through a whole afternoon of hands-on to get you familiar with the tools that we have for the STM32 L4 and some of these new peripherals that we'll present to you during the morning session. If we have a look at the agenda, the first half hour today we're going to have a look at the tools installation to make sure everybody's got all the necessary tools to complete the rest of the day. Then I'll hand over to my colleague to do the marketing introduction so you can see the, all the new advances in the STM32 world. Then we'll cover the system architecture and the features of the STM32 L4. Then after coffee, we'll go through the different operating modes. So we'll have a look at all the low power features that come with the STM32 L based devices. So you can see all the stop modes, standby modes, things like that. After lunch, we'll cover all the new peripherals that we have on the STM32 L4. And we'll also look at how these new peripherals can reduce the bill of materials for a typical type of a project that we can use the STM32 L4 in. Then for pretty much the rest of the afternoon we'll be all doing the hands-on. So we're going to look at some of the features of the STM32 L4. We're going to look at the tools and ecosystem that we have around the STM32 device so that we can integrate these third-party libraries into a real-life project that we can do using the target board which we'll provide you with for the day. Then finally, at the end of the day, we'll show you some tips and tricks for our example that we will build in the putting it all together sections and then how we can integrate the low power functionality that is available in the STM32 L4 into our real life design that we've uh, built during the afternoon. Then finally, we'll have some uh, questions and answers if we haven't already covered them during the actual day as we go through the various presentations. So what are you going to get out of today's workshop? So hopefully you will get a good understanding of the new STM32 L4. You'll get to see all the features and use the tools and ecosystem that we have for the STM32 family. You'll also get to play around with the hardware itself. There's a picture of the eval board that we'll be using uh, during the day. And you'll get to play around with the firmware that we have for this board and some of the other ecosystem elements that we have. The discovery board that you will get uh, is yours to keep. So you can uh, take this home at the end of the day and continue playing around with the examples that we'll provide for this discovery board. So hopefully you've all received the introduction with what tools you should hopefully all have installed on your laptop. So the discovery kit is on the tables for you. Um, this is, as I say, free of charge. You can take it home at the end of the day. The tool chain that we'll be using will be IAR. Hopefully everybody's installed IAR already. Um, you will need a full uh, license for this particular project. 
So, so those of you who haven't requested the full license, we have a five-day um, training license that we can install on your laptop. You'll need a USB micro cable so that you can power and talk to the debug side of the discovery board in front of you. You'll also need a USB mini cable so that we can use the USB device of the STM32L. So anyone who's not got any of these cables, then uh, we have some spare here at the front. For installations on your PC, you'll need to have Java installed. This will get prompted for when you try and install the CubeMX. So hopefully everybody's got CubeMX installed on their laptops. Once you've installed CubeMX, then you will need to download one of the library packs. And this particular library pack that we'll need for today will be the L4 library pack, uh, version 1.3. The next tool that we will need to use from time to time will be the ST-Link Utility. This tool is an excellent tool. It will help you when you put the devices into some of the low power modes because IAR may not be able to reconnect the debug side once you've entered the low power mode, whereas ST-Link Utility will always connect the debug side. Uh, even from when it's been in one of the ultra low power modes like stop and standby. We'll need some form of terminal application so that we can see um, values that come out using a hyper terminal based device and we'll also need to use the multimeters. Now hopefully you've all got multimeters that can go down into the microamp range. Um, we're going to be down at sub one microamp uh, for some of these power modes. So hopefully you'll be able to do that. If not, we have one up at the front that we can uh, loan to you as we go through each of the examples when we're doing the low power modes. And finally, you will need a pair of headphones. So our application that we will be building in the putting it all together section uh, will be using audio. So, so we will need the pair of headphones so we can actually hear uh, the device actually generating the audio. Material-wise, uh, you will need to extract the STM32L4workshop.zip directly to the root of C, please, if possible. You can move it to somewhere suitable uh, later on after the seminar. Uh, the reason why we want it on the root of C is twofold. Some compilers don't like long path names. Uh, well, all compilers don't like long path names. So these will generate some errors if there's too many characters within the path name. And also when it helps debugging during the afternoon session, if you're all on the route of C, it makes it easier for myself and my colleagues to help you debug the hands-on if we all locate it roughly in the same place. Also included in this zip is the documentation and the slides that you will be seeing on the screen. So if you've all got your IR installed, then the next slide is of no use to you. Um, what you need to do if you haven't done IR installed, then there is on the memory stick in a separate folder, the IAR installation. Um, it takes about five to 10 minutes to install. Um, so you need to start that now, please, if you have. And then also on the memory stick, we have got the temporary training license. And to install this license, there is a particular section in the help uh, license manager where you can do an offline activation. So, so when you get to that point, I'll come around and show you how to do this. For those of you who have not installed Cube, again, that's on the memory stick there at that particular address in the PC Tools folder. Uh, that will take about two or three minutes to install. Then remember, you've got to install the library pack after that, uh, which will take about, again, another two or three minutes. It's on the memory stick. Um, if you choose to download it from the web, then it might take a bit longer depending on the connection. 
ST-Link Utility is also on the memory stick under the PC's tools folder. Uh, this, as I said, is the tool that we'll use for the recovery when IAR can't return you back from the low power modes. And then finally, Termite is our terminal application that we're using for this uh, seminar series or workshop series. And that is just a simple XE to install. Okay, so when everyone's happy that they've all got the tools installed, we'll move on to the next section of the workshop.